Thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm in the woods with Mike from TA Outdoors. We're doing a bit more to the roundhouse. However, it's a bit of a cooking episode today. So this is a pizza we just cooked in a Dutch oven and this is how we did it.
as you've just seen, we've just cut two of these off a big log. These are what we're going to be putting our pizzas on once they're cooked. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flour this board. This is going to stop the dough ball from sticking to the wood. So once you've floured the board, then using some dough, in fact this morning I got up quite early and I needed this all by myself in my kitchen. Yes, that is true. So what you want to do is put your dough ball down and just make sure it, it doesn't stick, it's not sticky. You don't want a sticky dough ball. And if it's still sticky, add a bit more flour, roll it in it, and hopefully it won't go sticky. The next thing, just using my fingers, I'm just gonna push, and I'm constantly gonna flip this as well. What I wanna do is make this almost as round as this log. You know, there are other ways to get this pizza round and flat. I could use a rolling pin. I could go and get a bit of hazel from the woodland. However, I'm just gonna use my hands. It really isn't that hard to just use your hands. So if you're wondering what I'm gonna be cooking this on or in, well, as I just said, I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven and I'm gonna be placing a tray into the Dutch oven, but I'm gonna lift the tray slightly off the bottom. The reason being is because we don't want this to stick to the tray if the tray was to sit on the bottom of the Dutch oven. Basically, we're trying to create an oven environment, not a frying pan hot surface environment. So once you get your dough to a nice thin but even shape, put your tray down and I'm just gonna add a bit more flour to the tray. This is, again, gonna stop it sticking. So I'm just using a simple oven tray I'm gonna place this down on it. So once you've got your pizza dough nice and thin and on your tray, it's then time to start building your pizza. First thing I'm gonna do is grab some of this, nice little dollop in the middle, and then just turn it around. Spread it all nice and evenly. What you wanna try and avoid is a hole in your pizza dough. What I mean is if you have a hole in your pizza dough, and this sauce seeps through the dough onto the tray, when it bakes, what will happen when it finishes is your pizza will be stuck to your tray. You'll then have to get a wooden scooper and scrape it off. Quite annoying. And the great thing about making these pizzas is you can put any toppings you want to put on your pizza. Whether you like a ham and pineapple or a spicy chorizo pizza like me, it's really up to you. So I put my tomato base down, then I put some mozzarella, some chorizo, I uh, put some, some grated cheddar as well, and then I've also put some red onions. And now for a bit of mixed herbs. Mixed herbs, and then one final thing, a little bit more cheese. The thing is about doing these, these pizzas is you don't want to overload them because what will happen is they won't cook in the middle and you'll end up with quite a runny pizza. So that's just about it. Oh, let's go for one more. And I think that is ready to go. So the next thing to do is to just to open up this fire. It's been burning for a few hours. We've got some lovely big coals there. That's the heat we want to cook our pizza in the Dutch oven. So this is the Dutch oven we're gonna be cooking the pizzas in. Just take the lid off. And as you can see, what I've done here is, I've got this baking tray and I've just put it in 
upside down. And that way, when I put this pizza tray in, it means this pizza tray and the pizza will be off the bottom, it'll be in an oven-like environment, and it'll cook nice and evenly. Oh, I almost forgot, a bit of chilli. Homegrown in the garden. So that is now ready to go in the fire. So Mike's gone for a slightly different style of pizza. He's gone for a calzone, which for any of you that know, it's a folded pizza. So I've got my pizza in this Dutch oven. Mike's got his in there. We now need to get it on the fire to cook. I'm gonna push all the coals aside to create a nice hot environment for these pizzas to sit in. There's one there. I'll move this one over for yours. Then in order to help it, we're just gonna push these coals up against it just to get it nice and warm. And then eventually it should get to a couple of hundred degrees. And then from experience, these take about eight to 10 minutes well, oh, a bit smoky over there. They take about eight to 10 minutes to cook. So the reason why I put those small sticks on was just to get that, that heat, that flash of heat in order to get the, the Dutch ovens up to temperature. And one other thing that I did, I just rotated both of the Dutch ovens 180 degrees because it seemed like there was a bit of a hot spot on one side of them. You know, cooking using a Dutch oven, it really is something you need to practice a few times and in order to get it right. You have to get a feel for it. You really have to understand how the hot spots work within the oven, within the fire. You really need to try and get a nice even heat within your oven. Well, if I flip it, it means I've got a fairly clean side. That's where the pizza's gonna go. So it's been just over 10 minutes. It's now time to take them off the heat. It's looking good, looking really good. Oh, you can see it got a little bit hot on that side, but the rest of it is absolutely fine. And it might seem a bit excessive, but I'm gonna be using my Viking ax to cut my pizza. And let's start off with one little slice. Oh, oh wow. Good? Mm. And you can see that is the, how evenly that has cooked through. Look at all the air bubbles in that. Wow, it's so good. Mm. How is it? I tell you what, look, <clears throat> that is that has turned out really good. Oh, wow, it's like heaven. It is so good. It's so beefy. Mm. Just huge. But it's the dough is we actually nailed. Like you got the consistency, bang on. Have a look at this dough. Homemade, fresh this morning. I did get up quite early, but look at that. You can just about see it's cooked all the way through. No doughy bits or anything. Mm. Love it. You know, we've done all sorts of different methods, techniques, different ways of cooking. 
but we've never cooked anything like this. We've never really done pizzas, have we? I think this is the first time we've done it, yeah. We do, we do a lot of meat stuff, don't we? Like do a lot of meat. meat over the fire and... I think last time I came, I did a few, I did a few pastries, a few croissants in the Dutch oven. Uh, and we do a lot of bread as well, actually, mm. we do a lot of bread. But it's the same sort of thing, you know, so you're just cooking bread with toppings yeah. on it. You know what? I'm starting to wonder why we've never done this before. Because I'm enjoying it so much. All the more inspiration to build a pizza oven. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Let's build a pizza oven Let's out of it. clay. Yeah. Once we get this project done. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about making these pizzas, you can do it at home or in the garden as well. You just need one of these Dutch ovens. And it comes down to just choosing what toppings, you know, find out what your favorite pizza is when you get a takeaway pizza or even pizza you buy in the shop and just recreate those toppings, put them onto your pizza dough. What I'm gonna do is put a link below in the description to tell you guys how exactly I made this pizza dough. Now that I've said that, back to the pizza. So the Dutch oven we used, it's actually made by a company called Petro Max. They're based in Germany and they do some really good kit. Well, great outdoorsy cooking kit. Once again, I'll put a link below to Petro Max. Well, that is about it. I just want to say thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and I'll, I'll be back soon. I don't know when, but it'll definitely be another irregular upload. And also, if you haven't already, don't forget to check out Mike's channel, TA Outdoors. I'm going to put it in the description below. Well, on that note, goodbye.